blessings flow. We welcome you to our worship services here at Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church, located in Apex, North Carolina, and our pastor is Elder Jamar Cobb. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord.
against every principality, every ruler of darkness. We cast you back to the pit right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask that you just come into this service, God. Go into the homes, oh God, and bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we lift up Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We lift up the members, God. We lift up the essential team, the musicians, oh God. We lift up the man of God, our pastor, who will come forth with the word, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you look out upon this nation, oh God. Have mercy, Jesus. Oh God, there's so much trouble in the land, oh God. But we're looking unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're looking unto you, oh God. Oh God, because we know that you can answer. And we know that you will in due time, oh God. Lord God, we lift up the sick and the shut-in, oh God. We lift up bereaved families on today, oh God. Oh God, we lift up those who are in the armed forces, oh God. Oh God, we lift up all communities, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, move by your power and move by your strength on today, God. God, we just come with a praise on our lips, dancing in our feet. Oh God, we come with a thank you and a glory hallelujah. Oh God, we ask that you just have your way in this service. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you for this is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. October 14th at 6.30 p.m. We will be having our church business meeting. To our Oak Grove members, please respond to the email that you received earlier this week. Also, on Sunday, October 25th, we are planning to have our church homecoming. And details will be given at a later date. If you need prayer, or if you're looking for a church home, please do not hesitate to contact us. Our contact information is located on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page. If you would like to sow a seed into the ministry, you can do so by utilizing PayPal, Cash App, or Giveify. And again, the information is located on our YouTube page and our Facebook web page. We're gonna sing a song that everybody knows. I've been talking about giving God praise, so we're just gonna praise him. And thereafter, our pastor will come forth with the word on this morning.
Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand up of praise. Oh, come on. The Lord has been with us and thank you. For the goodness of the grace of the Lord. Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. 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 And we thank Him. Oh, We all know if I'm in here. It's good for us to be here on another day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing that we're still here. Amen. We're still here. Amen. We thank God. Yeah. Somebody said, oh, that's how old. We thank God we're still here. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. There's so much, so much death that's around us. It's almost seemingly unbearable. Found out from this week there's some tragic news related to Amen. Certainly, let me stop right and say this. Um, uh, thank you to all that tuned in. Certainly, we know that this is Clergy Appreciation Month. We thank our very own Evangelist Linda Marie Sue. Oh, come on, let's give it up for our Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Thank God for our Thank God for her and certainly she is a blessing to our church family. Amen. Thank you for appreciating me. But uh, we pause, amen, to appreciate those of you, those that follow me on Facebook. Amen. Lord, just drop it in my heart to just salute pastors. Amen. This is a season where you need to salute and appreciate pastors a little bit more. Amen. So every day I commit not be seen to be heard. To salute and shout out. Amen. Didn't do it this morning because I uh, woke up a little bit later than I intended to. Amen. But day ain't gone yet. Amen. But we want to salute those that are serving. Amen. In times like these, and certainly we're praying for our Amanda Sims as she uh, has death in her family. Amen. But she uh, didn't allow that, and uh, if she wouldn't have been here, we wouldn't. Uh, we would have understood. Uh, but she still pressed her way on today, and we're grateful to God for that. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. That's a that's a blessing in your presence. That's right. Uh, that's a blessing in your presence. Yeah, yeah. That's a blessing in your presence. We all just stayed at home because of how we felt. I don't think none of us would really do much of anything. Amen. Because sometimes we just don't feel like it. Amen. But thank God that she pressed her way and certainly uh, to her family. We're praying for them uh, as they go through this time of difficulty. But certainly there's so much loss in our community. Uh, so much loss. Amen. I, I don't want to start calling names because uh, I, I am very uh, mindful that when you people are grieving, Allow them time to grieve, amen. But I will say that be in prayer for, amen, those that are, are familiar with the regional free will Baptist denomination where I grew up and had my roots, amen. The Bishop J.N. Perry, amen, uh, transitioned on last week and certainly uh, be in prayer for he, uh, well, be in prayer for his wife, rather, uh, who was a pastor as well, uh, Pastor Annie Perry and that family, amen, as they go through uh, this difficult time. Uh, the seemingly the patriarchs are embracing eternal rest, uh, which they are due, yes, sir. amen, yes, sir. but that leaves a void here. Yes, sir. And uh, 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 Evangelist says, I'm just wondering to myself, Lord, because y'all know I'm more old school than I am, do school, yes, yes. what in the world yes, yes. are we going to do? Yes. Because there's seemingly is the dedication, the accountability. I'm old school. Accountability uh, seemingly has just went out the back door. Yes, yes, yes. As long as we can add and say we have so many people on our church roll, yes, sir. Uh, that's where God gets the glory. But the reality is, He wants us to live holy. Yes, yes, yes. I don't care if you're Baptist, Amen. Presbyterian. The Bible says, Holiness no. without, no. it is no man, no man, no man. shall see God. And so I just ask the Lord to hold me up, not that I'm so great, but I just want to live right. I, want, I just want to live right. I, I, just, I just want to do what's right. I don't care who's watching me. I don't care if I ever, if I don't ever make a reason. I just want to, do I have a reason? I just want to live right. Amen. I just want to live whole. I just want the Lord to be satisfied with me. And so certainly as the pillars of the 
church are transitioning, transitioning, amen. There is a void that's left, amen. But those of us that remain, there's a work for us to do, amen. So those of us that's been dragging our feet, amen. Uh, yeah, somebody's uh, sleeping on their call, amen. God has called you, you just sit on stool, do nothing, amen. It's time for, amen, that's a change in the gods, amen. So it's time for us to step up to the plate, amen, and do what the Lord has called you to do. Amen. Because you ain't going to give an account to me, but you're going to have to give an account to him. Amen. And you can't do, he can't say well done unless you do well. All right, that's enough of that. We thank God for today. Amen. Uh, we thank God for uh, my mother. Amen. Surprise is on today. We thank God for all of you. Amen. I'm not going to uh, go ahead and today, but uh, thank God for all things. From the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, we've been in this series. Uh, thank God for the musicians. Amen. On today, and those essential team and our leadership, thank God for all of our leaders here at Old Road. Uh, we've been in this series uh, entitled Deal With It. And today we're going to wrap that conversation up with the Lord right. say the same. Right. And we were talking about complaining. Amen. We talked about a numerous amount of things. Last week we talked about I trust in God uh, simply because the fact of the matter is some people uh, are not trusting in the right things. Uh, they're trusting in uh, sage that they're burning at home. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Uh, catch that. Watch uh, out. And all these incense. I don't know. I don't know where all this stuff is coming from. All, this, all of a sudden, we were burning incense and yeah. stuff and all this. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know yeah. okay. uh, but uh, uh, which, uh, yeah, that's right. That's what it is. Um, let me go on to say that. The witchcraft is still real. Uh, but some are not. And some are so, in, 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 in so engulfed in our political arena. Uh, if you saw that debate on this last week, you, oh gosh, you just debate don't even seem to be. Uh, uh, but that's not, but nonetheless, we have to keep our trust in God. If you're leaning on your politician, Amen. You need to vote, but if you lean on your politician, you gonna utterly fall. Amen. Because the God I serve is not a Democrat nor a Republican. <laughs> He's got us all in his hands. Amen. First Samuel, we're gonna uh, look at the 15th chapter, the 34th verse. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't, say wait. All right. Those are our virtual saints who in prayer that you are there. If not, amen. Once this airs, you can hit rewind, amen, and enjoy the message. All right. First Samuel 15, 34. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house to Gibeah. Saul went. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Saul mourned for Saul. Samuel mourned, excuse me, for Saul. And the Lord, get this, repented that he made Saul king over Israel. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated on today. The Lord repented. Yes, sir. Come hmm. on. The Lord Come on. repented. The Lord repented time with it. that he had even made Saul king over Israel. Israel. I want to talk to you this afternoon from the subject, the power of rejection. Okay. The power of, that's what I was reaching for in case somebody was wondering what I was reaching for my Bible. And I hope you got your Bibles out because that's where we're preaching from. Come on, Pastor. As we look at the present state of the world we live in and life as we know it, although, although it is sad, it is a fact that there are many who are literally dying in an attempt to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we look, we see people who are willing to lower, lower or demolish morale, self-esteem, self-preservation, and sensible prioritization in order to be accepted socially, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We're in a day and time where people will go as far to publicly embarrass themselves for social claim and fame. In a time where people measure their self-worth and uh, effaceable value based on the opinion of social likes and reactions. When people will do, uh, when people will do anything just to be accepted by people who may never truly know who they are. Right. It seems that there, uh, so many have lost their identity, their sense of self-worth and self-preservation, and we seem to now value stuff and things that are not essential and really does not matter. As a result, the drive and motivation to accomplish great things has deteriorated. 
Why? Because as long as I can portray a lifestyle socially, uh, men lose, uh, as long as I can portray a lifestyle socially, men will now begin to lose, or as a result, have been, begin to lose the motivation to obtain it tangibly. Uh, people will post statements and repost scriptures on social stat, uh, sites full of wisdom to gain social status, but are truly disconnected from the very God that they're posting about. Uh, have you ever wondered, maybe it's just me, uh, but have you ever wondered what our lives would be like if we no longer had the book where you can have as many faces as you want? Mm, all right. Uh, now, I'm not knocking Facebook because uh, that's what we're using today and right now. And I think it's a great tool when you can use it in a positive and uplifting way. But sometimes I just wonder how different our lives would be if people were no longer able to, beh to hide behind a screen. If people were no longer able to use a name other than the name on their birth certificate. If we all just went back to keeping it real rather than trying to be accepted by people who you may never meet in your life. Beloved, we're living in a time where the church is experiencing a wave of theological theory and social uh, spirituality, yeah, where the extent of one's relationship with God is no greater than what we see in the public. We're living in a time, as it were, where there appears to be so many forms of godliness, yet still denying the power thereof. In a day where we are more concerned with how our profile pic and coverage page look rather than our soul being right with God. Will somebody can help me in this house? Uh, men are dying, dying to be accepted. Sadly, many of the people whose acceptance we're seeking are the same ones who are chasing lifestyles that they don't have because everybody isn't who they post to be. All right. All right. Mm. Yeah, we desire acceptance from people who have nothing to offer and nowhere to take you. We model ourselves after relationship goals that are no more than 15 seconds of fifth filtered nothingness, and we have lost our foundation and principle. Now, because of the pandemic, many are eager to eager rather to get out of the house, not because of claustrophobia or desire for a change in scenery, but sadly, people have become eager to rush back to church, rush back to the office, rush back to life as we once knew it because they're so scared they're going to miss out on something. I was about to help me in this house. As if God is not at home with you. Uh, child of God, it's time for you to stop trying to go to a church and learn how to be the church. The Lord help me in this house. Uh, nothing wrong with coming together, but now we must understand uh, that there are some things that uh, sometimes disrupt our coming together. Uh, but that does not mean that God, God is as much as he is in this building. He's at your home. And if he ain't in your home, he's in my of your house, he's there because I take him everywhere I go. Yeah. Too many people are okay with giving God a veneer, part partial of a relationship. Meaning people rather give God something false and far from genuine. And now we strive for people to approve who we are. Now listen, don't you know that when you realize who you are in Christ, you don't need the approval of people or the amen of people. We've gotten to a place where we give God less and we give people more. We hurt and we cry over rejection from people who made the decision that we weren't good enough for them. Uh, we hurt from people we expected to accept us, reject us. But the question I want to ask us on today is what do you do when you realize that you have been rejected not by Trump, not by Biden, right. not by who's in who's who, but when you have been rejected by the Almighty God. I'm enjoying my own cooking this morning. Because uh, what do you do when everybody else is you, but yet you have been rejected by God? Mm. As we dive into the text, we see here where the Lord makes it clear to Samuel that he regretted making Saul king. I hope because this is very, uh, very beautiful text here. I don't know if you caught that, but God Himself wished that He had not made that decision to make Saul king. Yet Saul, get this, remained king after the Bible gives us the intelligence that the Lord regretted allowing Saul to be king. So God regretted that He allowed Saul to become. 
king. And then after he uh, makes that declaration in the text, yet you would think that God would have removed him, but God allowed him to stay on the throne. Can I tell you something? Is it possible to be accepted by others? Uh, but that does not mean, or it is possible rather, uh, to be accepted by others, but that does not mean because you are accepted by others that you are accepted by God. This helps us understand that it is possible to have a position and still be unacceptable. Oh, glory to God. You don't have to take my word for it. Just look at all the bigotry, misogyny, chauvinism, and objectification that we see uh, coming from the person that holds the highest office in our country. Yet there are those, and I can't understand this, that name the name of Christ and will stand flat-footed and then pray and scrutinize those that disagree with the arrogance, the haughtiness and egotism uh, uh, in which he allows uh, to make his decisions and in which he allows himself to be deeply rooted in. If that's not, if that's not acceptable, I don't know what is. Right. What are you talking about, Pastor Carl? Many people, I'm trying to help you read between the lines with our bread and politics here, but many people will uh, scrutinize the individual because they're not going for a certain person. If what that certain person is doing is right. Let me tell you something, right? Don't have no political affiliation. You either right or you either wrong. What do you do when you realize that you have been preaching and although you still get the amens, but you're preaching fight. Singing, fight. Shouting, fight. Churching and you fight because God is not pleased with what you bring to the table. You have status in the public, but you hold no weight in private because what you do is displeasing to God. We see in, in a, a very exemplary personification of this principle that is, it is indeed possible to be received by people, yet rejected by God. We must understand that Saul is king uh, uh, because in Samuel's old age, the people begged for a king. And although that was not what God wanted and desired for Israel, he allowed it because of the request of the people. But he did not approve it because of the position of Saul's character. Saul was able, but his character was unacceptable. There are some places that your anointing can take you yes, where your ability and your character won't keep you. Oh, so no, 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 no. Every door open, oh, there must be no. No, sometimes God allows doors to open just so He can show the real possible. Show people who you really are. There are some places that your anointing can take you uh, where your ability and your character can keep you. Uh, there are some times in life where your anointing will take you to places that your individual issues will not allow you to stay. And that's why you got to deal with it. Because if you don't deal with it, God will elevate you to a position, but you'll mess the whole position up for you and everybody else because you have decided not to deal with the real you. It's a shame when we reach levels of our ability, but we lose favor because of our proclivities. As if God don't see what we do in our homes. As if God don't listen to the conversation we have on our cell phones. As if God is not able to not, yeah, you may have a privacy screen, but God can still see your text messages. Uh, yeah, you may be CC and CC people, uh, but God can still see your email. It's a dangerous thing to be accepted by people, but yet disregarded by God. Sad that we're living in a time where we are anointed, but the foundation is missing because uh, of the we're set on the wrong thing. Saul is serving, but the Lord has rejected him. So what is what? So what this causes us to know is: don't think just because there's an opportunity and that you take it that God is pleased. <laughs> just because there's an opportunity and you take it does not mean God is pleased. But that's why you have to pray, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart. In thy sight. Yes, yes, yes. Many people have become disillusioned and think that just because they are in a position 
And there's nothing wrong with climbing the ladder, but sometimes you want to uh, uh, climb the ladder. If that means you got to sell yourself out, I'd rather stay where I'm at. Yes, sir. That means I, oh, Lord, have mercy. If I got to do some scandalous activity just to get ahead, I'd rather stay where I'm You know what? It's sometimes good for you to stay at the bottom because you can show somebody else that God will keep you. How in the world are you making you make it $12 or $10 an hour? Why? Because I don't put my trust in man. I put my trust in God. People have become disillusioned. They think just because they're in a position. And I've been there for a while. That is an indication that God must be pleased. Uh, watch out. Let me tell you, sometimes God will allow you to keep a position because his name mm. is on the line. Yeah. And only God can take evil and corruption and turn it around and still get the glory. Mm. God has given Samuel instructions to give the salt. Notice in verse 2. He tells them to destroy the Amalekites. Destroy everything from the women to the children. And everything that belongs. Don't leave anything. The Amalekites, God had a problem with them as the children of Israel were coming through. Amen. And God has now given instruction to Samuel to tell Saul, I want you to destroy these people. Don't leave nothing. Take them, wipe them completely out. Yep. You see those instructions given to Samuel and he gives them to Saul. To destroy everything. God was specific in his instructions to Samuel. He says to tell Saul to spare nothing and nobody. Mm -hmm. Saul then summons 210,000 soldiers. And I'm still in the book in verse 4. They go up to set an ambush at Amalek. But when we arrive to verse 35, we drop down to verse 35. The text tells us that God regretted making Saul king. God literally, he literally repented because he was so disappointed with his children. It repented God that he allowed Saul to serve as king. What is it that Saul did to make God reject him? I want to challenge everyone on the side of my voice on how we can avoid becoming rejected as Christians. It's in the text God tells Samuel to tell Saul to destroy everything and everyone but the Bible tells The king of the Amalekites alive. Right. First thing you keep your notes, know, even if you can't or not keep your notes, know, the first thing that caused God to reject Saul is he kept in possession what God told him to destroy. God, God. It's first thing, he kept in possession uh, what God told him to destroy. But why, 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 Saul, did you keep the king of the nation that God told you to wipe out? Is it because of Saul's ego and pride? I saw made Agag a keepsake of what God told him to destroy. And for some of us, the issue that we are experiencing is that we, we are holding on to things that God has clearly told us to destroy. Uh huh. And uh, we're experiencing what we're experiencing because we want to hold on to mementos and things that God has told us to destroy. Uh, 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 perhaps, why did Saul, why did Saul, Saul, why don't you keep? Something that God told you to wipe out. Too often we find ourselves holding on to remnants of things that God told us to get out of. Things that God told us to cut completely off. Have you ever had one thing that God told you to get rid of? That friendship that God told you to walk away from? That relationship that God told you is over? That issue that God told you to let go of? And for whatever reason, you are holding on to trophies and reminders. You're holding on to photos and text messages and songs. And when you hear the song come on, you say to yourself, yeah, that's our song. And God has told you to cut that person off. Is there anybody that understands that uh, uh, if we, when God tells us to cut something off, we got to cut it off from the head. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talking about holding on to keepsakes that God told us to get rid of. Uh, but this is why you cannot afford to hold on to remnants in this season because notice in the text, God told Saul to destroy everything. And he decided that he was going to keep the king alive. Keeping the king alive insinuates now that Saul kept the head alive. Mm -hmm. And if you hold on to the head of anything, you're literally, literally holding on to the power of that thing. In other words, if you hold on to the power of your issue, then your issue has the ability to come back and overpower you. Now that's why when God says to cut it off, you have to cut it off from the head.
today. You can't afford to hold on to remnants and trophies and go down memory lane. Some folks, you don't need to go down memory lane with them. You can't hold on to everything uh, for when God says to cut it off. You got to cut that thing completely Oh, Stop playing with fire in this season. That's how you end up as Lord help her. Uh, Jada uh, said an entanglement. <laughs> Who ever heard of such entanglement? No, no, I don't mean that. Uh, uh, caught up doing stuff that you don't have any business doing. And now you go to the world. Everybody embraced an entanglement as if an entanglement is acceptable. Never has it been acceptable for you to be in an outside relationship. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. Never has it been acceptable for you to be in an outside relationship than you are in a marriage. When you are in a marriage, you are in holy covenant with God. The world says it's okay to have a boo on the side. The world says it's okay to have entanglement. The devil is a liar. Don't allow that entanglement to call you to miss heaven. When God says let it go, you have to let it all go. This is not the time for us. To be playing around. But if, uh, if God gives us instructions, we must follow the instructions of God. No matter how we feel, no matter what we think, you must cut it all off. It doesn't matter how many steps they say it takes for you to break, to break a habit. You got to go cold turkey. You got to cut that all the way off. And the only way you're going to starve something, or the only way you're going to overcome something, is you got to learn how to start it. You can't allow that to be fed. And so there's some people that you gotta learn how to delete. You gotta learn how to block. Yeah, yeah, and stop allowing people to have free course in and out of your life. That might be the thing that's holding you back from getting to where God wants you to be. Let's cut it off. It doesn't matter what the world says. We trust in God. What is there anybody that can, can say I'm cutting it all off? I'm not playing with it this time. I'm not holding on to it anymore. I'm not messing around with it anymore. But this time I'm cutting it off at the head. Somebody needs to cut it. Uh, it weighs too much. You need to cut it. It's going to cost you too much. You need to cut it. It's going to make you mess around and slip back. You need to cut it. It's going to keep you from getting to where you're supposed to be. You need to cut it. It's holding you back from your purpose. You need to cut it. It's holding you back from your destiny. You need to cut it. You need to cut it from the head. Not only did God reject Saul because he kept in possession what God instructed him to destroy. But secondly, God rejected him because he disobeyed God's complete instructions and did what he felt was right in his own eyes. Come on. You cannot expect to be in God's favor and you are disobeying God's instructions. Saul tries to reason uh, uh, yeah, Saul tries to reason with it uh, in, in, in certain ways. In verse 15, when Samuel asked why he kept it, he replied by saying, I have brought the best of everything because I wanted to offer it to the Lord as a sacrifice. Yeah. God has told you to get rid of it. Yeah. And now you say, I'm going to keep it. Because yeah. I'm going that's what we're doing this season. We're offering stuff that God has already rejected. Oh, I know, I, I know that you somebody. You offering stuff that God, God have told you to leave that person alone, and you were messing around and got married, and you wonder why your marriage ain't working because God ain't never blessed it. Oh, help me in this house. Yes, sir. You got to learn how to consult the Lord in everything that you say and do. Don't take no position unless you ask God, God, what is your will for my life? Because when I get to that place, I need the grace. I need the favor to keep me where I am. So now we're offering God things that he has rejected and expecting God to bless our miss. Uh, when God or when Samuel asked Saul why he kept it, he said, I kept it because I wanted to offer God a sacrifice. God had already rejected it. In the Old Testament, sacrifice was a form of worship. But can I tell you that you cannot bring God worship that he is not pleased with. For too long we have been walking a dangerous line, bringing God things that we felt were right in our own eyes. Psalm 24, verse 3 through 4 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. You cannot bring God your mess and sloppy 
be second and expect for him to honor that. Uh, this is the season where we gotta stop bringing God filthy worship. We gotta stop bringing him pure worship, pure in our heart, pure in our mind, pure in our spirit. Stop bringing, you don't like stuff filthy in your house, so why are you trying to bring God some filthy in his house? Lord, help me in this house. You cannot bring, hallelujah to God, you cannot bring God something that he told you to destroy. Uh, this ain't your thing. You can't do what you want to do. It doesn't work like that. God is looking for some real worship. He's not looking for an outside show. He's looking for true worship. He's not looking for a form of godliness. So that because I look or dress or talk holy does not really mean I'm holy. Huh? Because holy is an inside job. Huh? But it'll work itself on the outside. God wants true worship. Jesus. Where are the worshipers? The Bible finds, the Bible says that God is seeking a worshiper. And I believe that the reason why he's seeking is because worshipers are hard to find. It's easy, it's easy to find people that are shouting and that are crying and running. But it's hard to find somebody that will worship. Because the Bible says those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We cannot bring God what is right in our eyes because partial obedience is still, get this, Disobedience. Partial obedience is still disobedience. So you doing what you want to do is partial obedience, which still is disobedience. Now we got away from that word. We don't say that anymore. But now we're living on disobedient lives up to God and expecting God to bless us while we walk in disobedience. And shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid that we have began to reason and bargain with God as if uh, he was unsure of what he said. Uh, yeah, when you do the will of God, you have to follow his instructions. God wants complete obedience. Let the church say complete. Oh, come on now. Let the church say complete. Now is not the time to teeter and totter in our Christianity. You got to get off the merry-go-round. You got to put the balls up recesses over. If we're going to do what God called us to do, We indeed are going to be about our father's business. We have to do it in his time with our whole heart. I wonder if there's anybody that's listening to me that's saying, Lord, I really want to do right by you. All I want to do is what's right. I don't want to play with you anymore, God. I know I'm guilty for playing with you back down through the years. But Lord, I want to start today on a clean slate because I really you not a play toy. If you want to play with something, you go buy a toy. But God ain't nothing to play with. I wish somebody would help me in this house. I don't want to mess around with God. But I want to give him complete obedience. I don't want to forfeit my favor. So God, I make up my mind today. I will do it no matter the cost. If I gotta cry sometimes, then I'll do it because I want the favor of God. If I gotta shout sometimes, I'm willing to do it because I want the favor if I gotta cut off my best friends, I don't mind doing it because I want the favor of God. If I gotta cut off that boo that I'm gonna live so in love with, I'll do it because I want the favor of God. I don't want to be rejected by God, but Lord, I want to do what you say to. I want to follow the will and the way of God. I want to follow the plan of God. Saul was rejected. Because he held on to the things that God told him to destroy. Then he partially obeyed God. Second or lastly, Saul was rejected by God because he had an inability to give God a complete yes. Oh, God. oh Lord, have mercy. Do so you think that partial yes? God is pleased with her. But God wants a yes, not from your mouth. But God wants a yes from God a complete yes. We approach God as if we are uh, at a table bargaining. Lord, if I do this, will you do that and the other? When it comes to God, uh, this ain't no price is right. Uh, this ain't no can I make a deal. Uh, you got to do it God's way uh, or it's no way at all. The Bible says that he did what he felt was right in his own eyes. You got to, you got to surrender all when you surrender all. You must follow God's will and follow God's way. In verse 33, they destroyed the king of the Amalekites at Gilgal. So Saul ended up doing
that day. God repented that he even allowed Saul to be made king. But so, but here's the, the good news. The gospel is all of us have been assaulted. Yes, yes, yes. One point of our lives. Yes, yes. We did what we wanted to in our own lives. Gave God a partial yes. Gave him sloppy seconds. Leftovers. You know, leftovers, nothing wrong with them. Just, sometimes leftovers are better when you reheat them, but they don't apply to them. Watch out, pal. Love when, when we have Thanksgiving and Christmas and holidays because it's the, it's the to-go plate. Yes. See, like when I eat it the next day, Watch out. we were slapping, we were slapping our lips when we were eating, but see, like when you warm it up, these stuff didn't have an opportunity to settle in there. Yeah. Yeah. Those are good for us, but God don't want them like that. He don't want your sloppy seconds. God don't want to play second fiddle up to nobody. It's got to be him first. It's a dangerous thing to be rejected by God, but still working. Still working, but fired. Coming to church, fired. Serving in ministry, fired. Singing, but fine. I mean, you're getting dressed up in your best and fine. See, that's why he's going to tell someone, depart from me. Your work is in of iniquity. I never knew you. Why? Because God is the only boss that'll let you keep working and you be fine. He'll let you work and be fine. Why? Because his name is on the line. God repented that he made Saul because, or he allowed him to serve as king because Saul's heart was not in the right place. But God allowed him, notice God didn't wipe him out. God allowed him to stay in that position. Why? What does this tell us? Every just because we are where we are does not mean God is pleased. That's right. That's why I pressure me, Lord, are you pleased with, I, with what I do? Not, not, my loyalty is not to pass the first, but it's to God. God don't want no half of nothing. Right. He don't want half of your heart. He don't want half of your mind. He don't want half of your soul happy. He wants all of it. When you love somebody, you don't love them halfway, but you love them all the way. And God loves us with the everlasting love, but he wants us to love them back. And so God, I, as we go to God in prayer, we thank you for this day. Thank you because we know that rejection is powerful. You rejected Saul. But God, we don't want to be rejected. Lord, accept us on today. If there's something that we need to get right with you, God, let us come to our senses and realize that we're in need of your help. Lord, if there's something that we've neglected, that you've told us to do, oh God, if we're doing our own thing, doing whatever we want to do, not giving an account of what you told us to do, God, we repent of it. We cancel our agenda. We cancel our assignment. We want to get on your agenda. We want to be a part of your assignment. God, we ask that, Lord, that you would bless us even in the weak and fragile places of our lives. God, what we are teeter tottering, what we are not quite sure. Because of the flesh. God, help us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Help us to say, oh God, what you would have us to say. God, help us to give you a complete yes. Father, we repent of all our sins. Omission and commission. God, whatever we've done that's not pleasing in your sight. God, we ask that, Lord, that you created us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within us. And God, why are you doing it? Not if or when. Because we know you're able. But while you're doing it, we're going to give your name the glory. We're going to give your name the honor. God, even though we may not feel good when you're stripping us of ourselves, we still won't bless your name. God, even when we feel like we, 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 nobody understands us but you, God, we still won't praise you. Because it's not about how we feel. 
It's about how good you've been to us. Bless every bereaved family. Those that are going through loss. Touch, oh God, those that are on their bed of afflictions. God, those that have contracted COVID-19. Lord, we have to have mercy on today in the name of Jesus. Those that are even not even in their right mind. Lord, we know you are a mind regulator. God, while we're standing, while we're calling your name, we just want to say thank you. Thank you that you didn't deal with us according to our sins. Thank you, God, because you know our darkest secret. God, you know the real us. And God, we thank you that you didn't expose us, but you've allowed us opportunity to get our sins right. So God, before you start pulling back covers, before you start exposing because we know you're soon to come, Lord, we ask you to help us to be right. God, we, we know there's nowhere we can go that you're not. God, we know that, God, if we go even make our bed in hell, God, you're still there. So, Lord, we ask that, Lord, you were created us. Give us now a, a, a heart transplant. Create in us a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in us. And God, we thank you. Give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. And we thank God. God has spoken in the church to say, Amen. We thank God for those that are doing our broadcast on today. We pray this in a prayer. Amen. Uh, blessing to you. You may send correspondence. If you're not saved, amen. Send some correspondence to the email address that's on your page. Amen. We say to you on uh, this week, we will not observe our, we will not have our hour of power. Amen. As we have an internal reading here with our disciples, so uh, it is not open to the public. Just to be clear, it is uh, our Oak Grove disciples. We ask that you would, uh, as already been indicated, uh, be in gospel order, uh, and that the secretary has your option uh, indication. If you have not selected an option as of today, uh, then one has been made for you. So we ask that you would uh, please indicate which option you will so, uh, want, amen. Uh, if you do not make one, uh, one will be selected for you, amen. 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 So we ask that uh, you will be uh, mindful of that. And let us be in prayer for our community. Let us be in prayer for our country. Let us be in prayer for one another. We need one another. I don't care how much we have, we need one another. I need you, and you need me. We're all a part of God's body. And it's his will that every need be supplied. You, 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 you are important to me. I need you too. Let's thank God. Shall we go to that? We are all courageous. Let's, let's, if we lift our voices, and let's just sing a portion of that song. I think we have to be reminded that we need each other. That's old song. Yes, yeah, old, but it's still good because we That's need one another to survive. And the thing about it is we don't know when we're going to need the person. You know, we got to stop saying stuff like, well, they don't need me before I need them. God, let anything boomerang on you and you'll need them before they need you. You don't ever know if you're going to have a flat tire. You don't ever know who's going to have to bring you your last glass of water. Who's going to have to help bathe you and get you dressed. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to be mindful of that. I don't know, I pray that, you know, it'd be great if I could live a long life and just close my eyes and go be with Jesus. But somebody may have to take care of me. That's why you gotta be mindful how you treat folks. Treat everybody right. Amen. I want to, amen. If no one allow me to get old, amen. I want to be able to in my older years. If I can't do for myself that somebody won't roll their eyes and smack that lip and, and, and be hateful to me, I want them to be gentle and kind. You know, if we treat people right, it'll come back to us. Now, you don't ever know where you're gonna get. You don't ever know. Amen. We're here today and we're gone today. Yeah, yeah, we're here today and gone today. This COVID, this pandemic is real. Yes, Amen. And we never have locked arms. We may not keep doing like we used to. We never, may have never locked arms like this before. We need to lock arms now. Yes. Hundreds of thousands have lost their lives due to this pandemic. And here we sit. Some of us got high blood pressure. Some of us, some of us got diabetes. Some of us got thyroid issues. Some of us got ailments that we don't even speak about. And the fact is that there's people that's died that got your same ailments. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy. You think because you take that medication, that's what's old man, you know, I got, got me on pop these pills. No, no, because the reality is that somebody that had the same ailments you had that died. And so 
somebody say, well, I don't have any illness. I'm, I'm not sick, you know, I, I, I'm clean bill of health. I don't want to have to take anything. I just drink what I want to drink and eat what I want to eat. But you know, there's people that still healthy. That's contracted. Uh-huh. 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 Nobody, nobody, nobody is exempt. Nobody is exempt. So we got to treat one another right. Yeah. If we close our eyes tonight, I don't want to have to clean hot words to speak over me. I don't want somebody to be able to say something. I, they may not, they, you know, let me say this. We're closing. People may not like you. Because when you do what God said, people ain't gonna like you. But I want somebody to be able to say, you know what, he was for real. I want people to know that I'm real with God. And when you're real with God, God will handle the rest. So let's say I need you to go. I need you. You need me. Come on, church. We're all a part. Rest rule of 